Hey, what's up guys? I'm Steven from TechSteveHD.com, making technology easier. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Roku Premiere. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you all about it. So let me tell you guys a little bit about the Roku Premiere. Now, why am I making a video two years after it came out? Well, I've been using it for a while, and one thing I really realized is that the Roku really performs very well. I have an Apple TV, I have the Fire Stick, and overall I have Roku's on all my televisions and it works universally for everything. Like you're gonna be able to get your Spotify on here, your Pandora, as well as YouTube TV and all kind of apps. Another thing I like about it is that it allows you to add custom apps to it. For example, once you log into your account, you can search for application that people made and add them to your account and be able to play them on your television, which is a cool feature. Another thing I like about it is that the remote control has a output for headphones. So if it's late at night and you don't want to disturb your neighbors, you can simply put in a set of headphones and play your music and TV right there with the remote control. So let me tell you a little bit about the unit. On back of the hardware, you're going to find a convenient ethernet input. So when you want to hardwire it, a 4K slash 1080p HDMI output, a micro SD card slot for adding your own media and a DC power supply input. It comes with the media device, an instruction book and some recommendations, a power cord, remote control, headphones for the remote control, and it comes with a set of batteries. The Roku Premiere, even though it's 4K that can support up to 60 Hertz with a 2.0 HDMI cable, it also can support your 1080p television as well. So if you're thinking about getting a 4K TV in the future, you can buy one now and downgrade the signal and when 4K come out, you can update it. It's also gonna support all your major Wi-Fi's including the AC frequencies and you're gonna need that to get the full bandwidth of your Wi-Fi so you can get the clearest signal you can with 4K. Now let me show you how to set it up. On the first screen, choose your language. Now you can choose your wired or wireless network. I'm going to set it with Wi-Fi today, so just go ahead and enter your password once you find your network. Once you enter your password, you may be prompted to update your software, so go ahead and do that as well. Now the next part is you can set up your display, but I always leave it on auto detect. And since I'm using the 2.0 HDMI cable, it found that I can actually run in 60 frames per second on this particular device. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and pull up your web browser and go to roku.com slash link. If you don't have an account, you'll be prompted to add one there. Once you get to the website, go ahead and enter the link code. If you don't have a Roku account, you can go ahead and create one now, but I already have one. And once you log in, it's going to give you some choices to get everything set up. Uncheck what you don't need. Then the device will start downloading your apps that you might have in your system or the ones that you selected when you first signed up. In this part of the video, I'm going to walk you through all the settings and menus, as well as show you how to uninstall and reinstall applications. So this part of the video may be long, but feel free to fast forward if it's not for you. When you first turn your Roku, you're going to be greeted with this screen right here. This will show all the applications that you have installed. Now you will need to log into these apps just to get them up and running, so make sure you have your source. The next piece is going to be feed, and this is going to be news and movies from Roku. At your movie store, you can rent, buy, and you can see top movies right here in your theater, local, so you have all different kinds of choices inside of here. On the TV store, you can see episodes, as well as watch list, your libraries, and really popular shows that are coming out on the market. Under the news feed, you have videos powered by American Online. And this is gonna give you top stories, all kind of different events so you can stay in touch. Then you can search for actors, TVs, and also movies. This is where you can add streaming channels. Whenever you wanna add new applications, go over here to the streaming channels, slide over, and then all you need to do is find the application that you wanna download, and then press the center and add the channel. If you go back to your home screen, 
you can see the edit channel is below. In order to remove it, hit the asterisk on the remote control and then remove channel or you can also move it. And you can also look for shows that has 4K content. The last part of this list is settings. First in settings, you have your network, and this is where you can change your network or as well as just check your connection. You have themes, you have graphite, under screen savers, you can add all kinds of different clocks as well as mobile themes and photos. And this happens whenever you leave your unit for a specific amount of time. So I have my setup at 10 minutes, but you can disable it. You can disable it or go all the way up to 30 minutes. The next setting is where you can change your display settings, but I like to leave mine on auto detect. Under accessibility, you can change your languages as well as your caption style. You can have audio guide, have them to talk faster or slower and control the volume and miscellaneous things. Under remote is where you can pair a new remote control as well as check your battery levels. Under audio, you can set up your different volumes, stereo or automatic. You can also change and detect your HDMI outputs, whether it's Dolby Digital, DTS, things like that. And night listening puts in a compression so it doesn't have so many dynamic moments. The next thing is you can control your home screen. So you can have your movies and TV stores hidden or shown, as well as the news feed. Under privacy, you have advertising and you can adjust your microphone if you have a version that has a microphone. And under systems, you can change your time format, control other devices, as well as languages. You can also set up screen mirroring so you can send your phone over to it. And this will give you a list of the devices that you can revoke later on. Update your software, reboot the system, as well as factory reset and some more. So the last part of the video is I'm going to show you how to install an application on your cell phone and also cast a video from YouTube or any sources that has the casting button. What you want to do is go over to the App Store and then search for Roku. Once it pulls it up, go ahead and press install or get if you're using an iPhone. When you get to this screen, select the Roku that you want to control. In this case, I'm going to do the Premiere Plus. Now the cool thing about the Roku application is that you can still use all the apps without signing in. But if you want to customize it, you'll have to sign into your account. Under Channel, it shows all the different apps that are connected to it. Under Photos, you can choose your music, photos, and videos, and screensavers to connect to the device. So when you have your phone on, you can run those different signals to the Roku device. But keep in mind, you have to give access for it to work. Under Settings, you can change your Roku device. So when you're doing screen share, you can make sure you choose the correct one, as well as some push notifications and some other things. When you press on a remote, you have a simulated remote control, just like the one that comes with the device. But the cool thing is that you can still control your up and down, your home button. You can also control the headphones by pressing the headphone icon. But most people use this feature so you can type in without having to use the remote control. As you can see, you get a full keyboard on screen. Another thing you can do is share your screen if it has the Chromecast icon in the corner. So let me give you an example. If you load up a video and tap on it, you'll get this share screen button at the top. Press on it, choose Roku Premiere, and it'll start streaming to the device. You can also control it from your phone. So here's my final thoughts. If you're thinking about buying a streaming device, you might as well consider the Roku. It's economical in price, so you're gonna be able to get it less than $100. And I think, in my opinion, it outperforms some of the other devices. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.